Well, here we are. It is all over. The 2022 indoor arena league season is over. It's finished. It's done. We have concluded this year. And I gotta thank everybody involved in, you know, all the leagues, all the different guys that, you know, help make this game great. It's not just me. I am just one person here. I do, I do have a couple of things I want to say towards the end of this video, uh, however long this may be, but what a season, man. What a season. And first things first, we got to talk the NAL Championship. That, that game there was not even close to what it was supposed to be. It was supposed to be a closer game to what it was, you know, 47 to what 20 47 to 20 I think I forgot already I forgot already because that's how bad it was that is how bad it was for the Carolina Cobras they got whipped tonight by the Albany Empire they got whipped at Albany technically you know even though it's technically a different franchise you know it's an NAL franchise now you know Technically, two straight championships, but you won't, but let's be real, three championships in the past four years, obviously 2020 notwithstanding, because you know Corona Chan, it you know, messed things up for everybody, and Sam Castronova and company, Darius Prince, all those guys, they did a wonderful job. What a wonderful organization, you know, you know that the Albany Empire has ran throughout the year uh, and props to them they did what they needed to do again I did not pick Albany to win the NAL championship first things first I did not pick Albany to win it. I picked Columbus to win the NAL championship and that did not happen you know that did not happen instead Albany persevered because again a lot of people you know some people during you know like the middle portion of the season were like down on Albany but then you know things picked up and things got good for the Empire, and they are back at the top for 2022. And, you know, not only do we have a 2022 NAL champion, we have a couple new teams. You know, we've already talked about Fable. I think I got it wrong a couple weeks ago when I said, when we talked about, or rather, when we talked about the Fayetteville E. I think I said they were like the Buffaloes or something. It's, I think it's actually the Mustangs that they're supposed to be called, but they haven't announced it yet. We'll see what they announce, but I assume it will be the Mustangs. At least that's what everybody else has been saying. Uh, and then you have the West Texas Warbirds, and I do want to give a quick, you know, quick tangent on them. They were in the Lone Star Series in 2021. They, they and Amarillo, the Venom, who are no longer with us for the time being, you know, they took that league. They made the AFA, the Arena Football Association. I've gone in depth this year of how bad the AFA was, a complete absolute disaster. And, you know, the way the West Texas Wilbert season ended with a brawl against the Dallas Prime, and keep in mind West Texas was whipping the Prime fifty to six in the fourth quarter but like seven, eight minutes to go. The fact that Leaf Curtis, Mike Curtis, all those guys in West Texas, you know, were able to pony up the money, pony up the sponsors, pony up things to you know, get it right and jump on over to the NAL. They are in a good spot. They're in a good spot because, you know, San Antonio's there and San Antonio's improving. Again, yeah, a lot of people expected, including me, a lot of people expected the San Antonio Gunslingers to fold after the season. That I don't think that's happening. I don't think any NAL team is folding after this year. I don't think anybody's folding. Albany said they're coming back. So to pr so to prove, you know, because oh yeah, and we're I'm gonna save something for the end too. I'm gonna save another thing that I want to talk about towards the end. But man, there is there there the way these teams get their support has just been outstanding. And West Texas is a good example of a classy organization. You know, they had, they may have handled the whole thing with the Dallas Prime a little bit, you know, 
little bit wrongly, but they corrected it, they got it together, and they fixed that situation real quick. So, the fact of the matter is, is West Texas is in. Uh, now some people are saying, oh, well, they're not going to play next year. They, they don't have this, they don't have that, yada, yada, yada. Like, people are already saying it. You know, I get what you're saying, but come on. This is, this is not... This is not 2020. This is not 2021. This is not the Ontario uh, team. This is not, you know, the Louisville Extreme. This is not, you know, a team like that. This is a proven team, you know, that, you know, was able to get out of a fledgling league, was able to make something of themselves. You know, under, keep in mind the Warbirds are undefeated. You know, they they're undefeated against you know the competition that they. Have to have, you know, that it is what it is. You know, I mean, Corona Chan really messed things up for them because this was supposed to be a CIF team back in 2020. It, it, and now they're in the NAL. And the NAL is in a much better position with the eight teams they do have. And there could be more. Again, the NAL is looking to go to 10 teams, you know, at some point. And whoever they target for those next two, I'll be waiting. I'll be waiting, and I'll give you know some more shout outs at the end here. Uh, but man, once again, one more time, congrats to the Albany Empire. You did it. Good job. In the IFL, the game that really was all the hype, it lived up to the hype. The Naz Regulars, Northern Arizona, the Regulars, led by Caleb Barker, Les Moss, you know, the whole crew up in Prescott Valley. They beat the Quad City Steve Willis, EJ Hilliard of the company. 47-45. The IFL Championship is theirs. And they are the fifth team in the last five seasons to win an IFL Championship. Yeah, there were some things, you know, kind of wonky, you know, with this game. But, I mean, it worked out. It worked out. You had Kevin Guy and Curtis Riggs on the call, you know, in, in the broadcast booth. You had... You had you had the end of the first half, which people were like, oh, you, the, the half, you know, ain't the half supposed to end on holding? And, you know, it was like, no, nah, that's not that's not the rule. <laughs> there has to be a play in the half. You know, Quad City, you know, it always, it made a couple of mistakes late in the game. They used the timeout when they shouldn't have, and that backfired on them. They had some bad kicking that backfired on them, but they played their hearts out, man. Quad City played their day of hearts out. I picked... Quad City to win this championship. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. I went 0 2. I went 0 3 on championship predictions, I think. Uh, the, you know, because remember, I picked the Arizona Rattlers to win the IFL championship. That did not happen. Not at all. And, I mean, congrats. You know, Vegas, you know, it wasn't completely full, but. It was it was a high energy, high fun, high electricity cloud, you know, that was able to make the best of what it did. And I gotta tell you, for a team that was worse than the league last year, a lot of people predicted them to fold, including me. I I predicted Nas to fold last year, and that did not happen. Going from worst to first has got to be, you know, one of the best things to, you know, feel. That's an invigorating feeling right there from going from worst to first. Beautiful stuff right there. And then, you, you know, you also got the IFL, you know, Todd Triad's been sneaking some hits in there. You know, your view was, a, you know, a... Uh, I actually watched the interview uh, from a couple days ago that your view did. Yeah, they they were the ones that broadcast the game nationally. You know, again, Curtis Riggs, Kevin Guy, they were on color commentary for this game. And there are some interesting tidbits here. And there's actually some more interesting tidbits here. At least a rumor from our good old friend Love FB on Arena Fan. You know, that could be you know circulating over the next few months. Uh, now. First things first, let's get to what Todd Tryon said on your view. He said that, hey, we could have 24 teams in the near future. And although I've been kind of hesitant on the IFL overexpanding, because remember, that didn't work a decade ago. It might work now, but it didn't work a decade ago. It didn't work a decade ago. It didn't work 20 years ago in the AFL. It didn't work a decade ago in the IFL. 
and now things are a little bit more stable. Who knows if anybody's folding next year? Who knows if Columbus is playing next year? There's a question about Bismarck, you know, now um, that Love FB proposed. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but we'll see. You know, like, apparently Bismarck could be moving to Fargo, but who knows? Don't even, let's not even entertain the thought of Bismarck moving to Fargo, North Dakota right now or anything like that. You know, and rebooting in like 2024, as she said. But I mean, who knows? Who knows if that's going to happen? Uh, you know, there's still the whole Coachella Valley thing. Tulsa's still picking their team name out. Col again, Columbus is the wild card here. We don't know what in the world they're going to do because there's a lot of things wrong with Columbus right now that need to be corrected. And I think they can be corrected, but we'll just have to wait and see what happens there. IFL's in a good spot. NAL's in a good spot. The league I'm worried about is the CIF right now. Um, bad momentum to end the season, and the offseason's been quiet so far. Uh, they're going to need something. They're going to need something. The NAL has directly moved up for me, you know, in the... Uh, in the way I see things, because I mean, this this is not what I expected at all. Nobody expected the West Texas Warbirds to join the NAL. Um, a lot of people expecting Charlotte to join the Charlotte Thunder to join the NAL. We'll see if they can do it during the off season. I don't know if they can. They have the they have the they have the guys that can, but we'll see if they can actually pony up the money to do something. There's also the Mississippi Raiders. That's another team that's going to be interesting. You know. Because remember, they took Greg Fernario's field, but luckily, 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 Greg Fernario's got his field back, and that field is going to Fayetteville. That field is going to Fayetteville. Um, you know, that is going to Fayetteville, and that's good. That's good for them. Um, you know, it is. It is what it is. It is what it is with, you know, that. So, whatever that Fayetteville's team name is, they're, they're going to be playing on West um, West Virginia's field. And keep in mind, West Virginia's not coming back, you know. Fornario has made that pretty clear with the way the momentum was with Corona Chan. It's clear that that team is not going to come back at all. Uh, it might have, but I, 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 I mean, there's just too much, you know, for that team to come on back. All right. There's a couple more things here before we uh, wrap this up. We got the Upland South Indoor Football League. That is a league that is existing. This is more of a fall league. So, you know, the fall leagues don't really get any coverage from me because, again, they it just kind of exists. And they're, like, very, very low on the totem pole. Like, we're talking so low, you blink and you miss them. And that's just what these kinds of leagues are. They're looking for teams in Kentucky, Tennessee, Virginia, Indiana, they're looking to release a schedule by uh, the middle of September. They have to, these teams have to put up $600, you know, $400 league fee, $200 deposit by the end of September. And a potential start of the league could be the first weekend of November. Um, you know, it was the uh, it was a team that ripped off the Florida Gators logo by the name of Morristown. There was another team, I think I forgot, I think I shared it. I think I shared it in Discord. Did I share it? Oh yeah, it's uh, the Kentucky Bandits. Yeah, uh, it is what it is. I think it's supposed to be like four teams or whatever. Um, honestly, I'll blink and I'll miss this league completely. But you know, um, it, it'll be cool to see you know what they could do if they can actually you know get off the ground, you know, and everything like that. Um, there's also another league that needs attention and that's the AWFC. AWFC is in a weird spot right now. Tri-City Rush, there was an email that got, you know, put out and it leaked on the IFF, you know, that hey, Tri-City was like, hey, we are looking for a new league. We're looking for somebody new. We're, we're looking for better competition and stuff like that. The AWFC countered by saying, oh, well, Everybody, everybody's fine, you know, everything is good, peachy, hunky-dory, nothing's wrong here, guys, nothing's wrong, at all. Um, 
they're trying to dispel the situation of a separation but the seeds could be sown and Tri-City is also stating that they're looking for a new arena um, so we'll see if they can get that we'll see what the AWFC does during the off season um, I don't know what they're gonna do um, if they do indeed do something you know it is what it is um, so and the other three teams in the league the other three teams in the AWFC you know they have they've already got their 2023 season tickets ready to go on um, the AWFC has their own problems that will all you know get into as the off season regresses and you know continues to progress all the way up until February late February early March um, so yeah there's that the last couple things I do want to talk about is um, fan engagement the season with fan engagement was absolutely distasteful absolutely distasteful I I haven't had a rant on here in quite some time you got new guys running inside the arena now no disrespect to Steven or no disrespect to the man at all man built a um, you know man built something that he you know put his passion in for quite some time now but the guys you know one of the guys that you know decided to you know or rather he picked to take it all over um, you know it, it is what it is I, like I, I just I don't get his issue I don't I don't get his issue you may know this notorious commenter in the chats of, of the IFL and ALCIF games you may know this notorious commentator or rather this notorious commenter excuse me um, now you know he got upset you know that you know the IFL and the NAL were gonna have their championships on the same weekend but that's that was the thing for months you know that that that's been the thing for months. You know the NAL said this during the press release of their schedule. You know way back in what when was the schedule release? Like January, December, around that time. It is what it is. IFL we know was going to be you know two weeks after the conference championships and even you know the press release and stuff like that and the move to Vegas and everything. We knew all this stuff. Um. And you, you got you got posts like that on Facebook and other posts that you, you know, that, that just uh, that just really hurt the integrity. And keep in mind, inside the arena, don't get me wrong, they they got some things right in the past. They got some things right. Uh, other times, you know, it's been completely wrong to the point where it was comedy. And I, I I've been wrong on things too. I've been wrong on things. I I don't. I don't get the sources, you know, firsthand. I don't get them secondhand. I probably get them forefhand. I'm probably the last person to get a source, you know, before before I do these videos each and every week. But you know, it is what it is, and I mean, you know, it's whatever. I might lose some subscribers today, you know. There's 182 of you, but I might lose some of y'all today for, you know, saying all this nonsense in the chat you know, today and throughout the season. Oh, well, the NAL and the IFL, they're going to merge. They're going to do this. They're going to merge and make one big league when that's not the case. They, 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 they um, you know, the NAL's trash. The IFL's trash. This league is trash when that's not the case. Just don't be, don't be that guy. Don't be that guy or gal in the chat. Don't be that person in the chat. Don't be that person, please. And then you got, oh, well, you know, cheerleaders, you know, yeah, the Chris truly is another notorious commenter that you may know of, you know, a well-respected man, by the way, uh, don't get me wrong, <laughs> his comments about the cheerleaders were just too much, you know, the the uh, the Carolina Covers cheerleaders were just too much for me, uh, which I, I just was like, yo, can you stop with that, man? I get it, but can you stop? <laughs> and it's just like, man, what what is wrong with some of y'all in these chats? I get, I get the bots are still there. I get the bots came back this year. I get, you know, I get that we are, you know, talking about the USFL. I get we're talking about the XFL. I get we're talking, you know, about you know other leagues that you know have to do with football that may or may not dilute the talent coming in 2023. But come on. 
some of the stuff y'all be saying in these chats are absolutely distasteful, absolutely horrendous, absolutely disgusting. And it's got to stop. Just talk about the game at hand. Oh, well, the production values aren't there. Oh, my God, the production values. This looks like a D3 college football game. You ain't seen no D3 college football game in your life, and you better stop crying. Stop crying. Oh, well, the refs did this. The refs did that. The refs, the refs, they, they, they took my job. They took my house. They took my family. They took everything from me because they, 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 they. Stop it. Stop it. Stop that right now. Stop complaining about the refs. I get it. I get it. There's ref ball. You know, I like to make jokes about ref ball, but when I, you know, and I like to call it ref ball when I see it, but I'm not going to make it a point to be like, you know, every five seconds. Oh, the refs did this. Oh, the refs did that. Oh, my God, the refs. Oh, the refs, they, they, they manipulated the outcome of this game. Blah, blah, blah. Stop it. Stop that right now. You gotta be out of your damn mind here. It's ridiculous. It's flat out ridiculous. I, 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 I really can't with some of y'all in these chats sometimes. I really can't. Y'all, y'all are y'all are a different breed in these chats. But it is what it is. I, I will. Uh, I love all y'all. I love all y'all. But some of y'all just be saying too much. Just be saying too much stuff in these chats, you know. Um, I, I think I think that's all I gotta say, you know. There's a lot of questions, you know, going into the 2022 off season, heading into the 2023 season. Um, but I think some of these could be answered really quickly. Some of these not so much, and some of these we're just gonna have to keep our eyes out on throughout the next six. Six ish months, we'll be you know talking, you know, doing our off season videos. Uh, I do have a couple plans in mind. I do want to try and get back to doing interviews again. Um, I may, you know, get may get some of the boys, you know, like Jayhawk, like Jim, like Zach, you know, um, you know, Dukon. I may get some of the boys together, and it depends on how things go because I, I um, you know, I got a flexible job situation but it depends on how things go throughout the off season and I do want to get some people involved you know it'll help the channel it'll help everybody else's channels and it'll help you know grow the game you know I want arena football to be respected I want arena football to be bigger than what it than what it was you know you know I want arena football to be that sport that we talk about, you know, that more people talk about in the summer months instead of, you know, like baseball or, you know, or negative comments about the WBA, not positive, because it, almost every, almost like 80, 50, honestly, like 65, 70% of comments about the WBA are negative um, or, you know, anything else. And I mean, it's, it's just, it's just been a blessing and an honor to do this once again and I mean I cannot thank everybody enough who has supported me who will continue to support me and who will be future supporters and I hope you stick around for the college football season coming up you know as we discuss and I moved the day up I moved it up a couple of days because the AP poll is going to come out on Monday and we'll be talking college football the preseason rankings the top 25 preseason rankings, you know, the state of college football. That's I think that's what we we'll call it because I did I did a similar title last year, you know, the state of college football coming, you know, to you um, on Monday. It'll probably be Monday night. Um, I do not know what my work schedule will be like on Monday, but I do know that I have some things to do early Monday morning and then, you know, late you know, it might be late, it might be a late night, I don't know, I'm going to get things ready for that video on Monday night, and with all that being said, I hope you all enjoyed the 2022 Arena Indoor Football season, and I will see you all sometime in September to discuss whatever new news will be coming. Big Boy Sports, signing out.
See you soon.